Jesus. No, no, no. We thank you for allowing us to come together one more time. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to get into your word and get to know you just a little bit better. Thank you, God, because you are our righteousness. We are complete in you. Everything that we need is in you. And so I thank you, Lord, for making us complete today. I thank you for making us whole from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Now, Father, I ask that you would just encourage and comfort the brief tonight. Many families are weeping with the different things that have happened this week, different unexpected deaths. Father God, in the name of Jesus, just do what you do best, and that's bring comfort to those families. God, I pray for our leadership all over the world, God, that your perfect will be done in their hearts, that you save to the utmost. In the last days, you said you pour out your spirit, and I thank you, Lord. Thank you for the outpouring of your spirit tonight. God, we just give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who's on the phone line tonight? Amen. You can... Um, Give your uh, name or, or, or a scripture. Amen. Just go ahead and identify yourself if you're on the phone line. Amen. Amen. Anybody on the phone line? Oh, I heard somebody. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we're able to be in the house of God. Thank God for our mothers. Amen. Coming in, we certainly give God praise. Amen. For each and every one of them. Amen. Glory to God. And we're going to go ahead and get a lesson. We've been talking. For those of you that are listening on YouTube, uh, we've been sharing on the purpose and power of praise and worship. Amen. And we're going to continue that lesson tonight. Amen. And just see how, uh, 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 how, just praising God and and and, and worshiping Him uh, uh, will make a difference in our lives. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to point out some things on, on Wednesday nights. We're talking about the purpose and power of praise and worship. And on Sundays, we're talking about walking in the light. Amen. So between the two of them, amen, we aim this summer to make a difference. There should be a noticeable difference in life. Amen. In my life. Amen. And in your life. Amen. And isn't that why we come to church anyway? Amen. For a change, to get a difference, to be encouraged. Amen. Glory to God. That's why we come together. Otherwise, we could stay at home. Glory to God. But all, God has called us together, as Mother always say, for such a time as this. This is our season. Amen. To draw near to God. He said, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Amen. So we're just thankful to the Lord that may be listening. We are on the YouTube. Mount Calvary, MT Calvary, N-C-O-G dot network. And we're also on the phone line. If you can't get to the YouTube, that's 701-801-6052. Uh, Pastor Melissa Rose Scott, if you're visiting with us tonight at the Mount Calvary National Church of God Incorporated here in Perrine, West Perrine, Florida. Amen. We're on the corner of 175th Street 
at 103rd Avenue. Can't miss it. So come and visit us when you're in the area. Amen. So we thank God. We thank God for all the sick and shut in. Amen. That may get a chance to listen tonight. They're not able to come, but they may get a chance to listen on the phone line. I hear the phone line popping now. People checking now. We are on the phone as well as on the YouTube. We're in the sanctuary tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want to talk about praise and worship uh, and the power, the purpose. Why? When we started this lesson, we talked about the creation and how God created the environment before he created the creation to live in that environment. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And he got right down to man and he created the Garden of Eden, place where man would dwell with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Where they would walk and talk. Amen. And then he created man. <laughs> it's the only one that he oh, didn't amen. speak into existence. He spoke everything else into existence. But yeah. man, amen, he scooped down and formed man mm -hmm. from the dust oh. of the earth. And blew his breath. Amen. Thank Glory to God. God. We've got the breath of God, oh, saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. That in itself ought to make you want to shout. Amen. amen. We've got the very breath of God. He blew that breath of life, and the scripture records that man became a living soul. Amen. We are a living soul. Amen. Glory to God. And so, amen, I just want to pick up where we left off, amen, and see if we can uh, just talk tonight. I want to talk about uh, creating a dwelling place for God. I want to talk about an altar and what is an altar and, 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 and what we do at the altar, amen. So that's where we want to uh, cover tonight, why we need an altar, amen. Glory to God. So praise and worship, of course, are God's solution to get us back into his presence. We said that last time. And that praise and worship brings God's presence to us. Amen. Doesn't put us in here, but it brings his presence. Remember, he inhabits the praises of his people. So if you want God to show up, just begin to praise him. He can't resist it. Amen. Not a sincere praise. He can't resist it. Amen. And so if you want to be in the presence of God. Amen. You then want to, of course, pre prepare an atmosphere where he can come. And that atmosphere is an atmosphere of sincere praise. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So praise is the worst tools that are set stage, of course, for God's arrival. That's what we do. We just begin to praise him and laud him and worship him, honoring him for who he is in our lives. Amen. We're going to ask everyone on the phone to put your phone on mute until you're ready to speak uh, so that we don't get the noise feedback. If you're on the phone line, just put it on mute until you're ready to speak. Amen. Glory to God. All right. And so we talked about the principles. The principles were, number one, everything in life was created to function within a specific environment. Amen. And we noted that the fish can't uh, fly in the air. And neither can the birds stay under the water. Amen. They were created for their specific environment. All right. And man's ideal environment, of course, was what? What did we say that was? What was man's ideal environment? Where does man strive the best? Yeah, yeah what's still how governing I know for the day. Right. That was his job. Yeah. That was his job, to have dominion over the earth. What was his ideal environment? And we've said this, you remember? There you go. There you go. In the presence of God. That's why we were created. We were created to fellowship with him and be in his presence. So anytime we're outside of his presence and not in fellowship with him, we're outside of the environment for which we were created. And you remember when I gave you the example of taking a TV and out on a boat and call yourself go watch TV in the middle of the water. Mm -hmm. Nothing to plug it up with. It's not going to happen because the TV wasn't made to be on a rafter in, a, in the water, in the ocean. Wrong environment, right? You're not going to take an iron and drop it in the water talking about when it's get hot, it's going to heat up the water. No, wrong environment. 
environment. All right, so we were created to be in the presence of God. And what separated us from that? Sin. Sin. All right, our sin separated us from being in our ideal environment. And so we have been malfunctioning ever since, right? Yeah. All right, so therefore, all, all of our problems stem from the fact that we've lost the ideal environment. We've lost our place where we're supposed to be. And that is in the presence of God. And that's why there is such a different uh, uh, I don't want to use the word feeling, but unction and anointing when you're in the presence of God. Yes. Amen. You know that. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. You know it. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so that's where we're supposed to live all the time. Oh, glory to God. But God is holy, saints. Yes, he, is. he is holy. Yes. He can't allow sin mm -hmm. in his presence. Therein is the issue with man. Man became unholy, and therefore he had to be cast out of the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Now, but God made a way. Yes, he Amen. We, through salvation, uh, through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Glory to God. That's the only way we can return or get back in his presence. So no unsaved person could be in his presence. Because of the sin. The blood of Jesus has to cover us from all our sins to get us back into our ideal environment. Now, you know what I know. And for those listening on YouTube, you say, what are you talking about? God is everywhere. Everybody in his presence. I'm talking about the sincere relationship. When we talk about presence and getting back to Eden, talking about the relationship that man had with God. Yes, God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He sees all and knows all. But to be in his presence is different from him being present everywhere. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Does everybody understand that on the phone line and on the YouTube? There is a difference. And so we were created to be in his presence. All right, that's where we function best. That's what we were designed to do, to be a fellowship, uh, in fellowship with him. All right, glory to God. So praise and worship are God's gifts to restore his presence back to man. So when man praises and worships God, they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. We're talking about just making noise or singing a good song that sounds good and dancing. No. I, that won't invoke the, invoke the presence of God. But true worship will. True worship will invoke the presence of God. It will draw him now. When you just begin to thank him for who he is and who, what he's done. And everything that he's done in your life. Or not even ask him, but Lord, you are the great I am. I am. Yes. Amen. Lord, you're Alpha and Omega. I know you are my source. You're my rock. In you when I trust. Amen. Now you're beginning to draw God in because you are invoking his presence because you're saying something that's true. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So it's got to be the truth and it's got to be in spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So I want to talk tonight. That was a kind of a quick review of last week. I want to talk tonight about creating a dwelling place for God. How do we create a dwelling place? He inhabits the praises of his people, right? So how do we create that dwelling place, that atmosphere for him to be drawn in? Amen. Remember, it doesn't take us to him. It brings him to us. So we want to talk about that tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Now, we know, and we said last the last couple of lessons, that God has been trying all throughout history to get man back in his presence. From the time Adam and Eve messed up and got kicked out, seraphims, cherubims came and uh, had to go on, stand on, God has been creating a means to get his family back. Amen. God loves his family. Yes, he does. And he wants his family. Amen. Just like you, 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 mother, I know you long to just see your children. And be with your grandchildren and just hug them. It's one thing to see them on the telephone. It's another thing to see them in person and have that communion and fellowship with them. And that's what you long for. God longs for his family to get his family back. Amen. Amen. 
Glory to God. He's been working on this from that time until now. Amen. So his goal, amen, is to restore the relationship. Amen. amen. Glory to God. So the Bible has a clear record of God's actions uh, to get us back into his presence. All right. So let's think about it. Think about the stories in the Old Testament. All right, they're not primarily about the patriarchs. While it talks about Abraham or the judges or the kings, amen. I wonder if that's one of the saints telling me something wrong with the YouTube. Excuse me. I will not answer it otherwise. That's Elder Wallace. Sing a song, mother. Please sing a song. Excuse me on YouTube for one minute. I don't know why. Huh? The phone is muted? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Amen. All right, maybe that's why Ella Rollinson was calling. Amen. Glory to God. The phone was muted. We had the phone on. All right. Sorry about that. that was, and I'm just talking to him. I can hear people on the phone. It was muted. Yeah, I took it off mute. So I had it on mute while we were setting up everything and forgot. So that means they didn't hear me singing or nothing. I do apologize for those of you that are on the phone line. Uh, I just realized at the time you say the phone was on mute. So I do apologize because I've just been talking to you all. Amen. But now we're on one accord. Everybody's here. Amen. The YouTube should be on. Amen. And the phone line. Now you should be able to hear us. So I do apologize. We're here and we're talking about creating a dwelling place for god creating a dwelling place for god all right and we said that god's goal throughout history was to get his people back he wants that family back he wants fellowship uh, with us so now what i was saying was if we think about the stories in the old testament you can pick any one whether it's about a abraham the patriarch or about the judges the king of prophets or even about the wars and the victories and how god came through you know wiped out the whole army just made the people kill themselves you got all of that but all of that stems back to god getting his people back to God's people coming back to him, getting that relationship. If you look closely, you'll be able to see how the Bible is summarized in God's actions to bring man back to him. Think about it. Think about some of the Old Testament stories and how they led up and what happened. Even whether it's David and Goliath or, or Samson uh, uh, with the uh, Philistines. Just think about the story. They all point back to God's relationship with man and how he longs to be with man. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. If you really go back, the door is open. That's why I'm up. Uh, if you really go back. So now let me let me let, let me get here. So the work of God has been to get man back. We agree? Amen. Into the ideal environment. And what is the ideal environment for man? The presence of God, being in the presence. That is our idea. That's where we will flourish, when we're in his presence. All right? So our ideal environment uh, is to be in the presence of God. Right? And so through the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's how we, we were able to begin communicating back to him. Amen. Getting back in his presence through the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. So think about it. Everything that Jesus did was to get God's presence back to man's experience. Everything that Jesus did was to get us back in right standing with God. Let's talk about it for a minute. What do you think his purpose was when he gave examples about children as a little child? Some of the little children that come to me. What do you think uh, was the purpose of Jesus doing that? What do you think? Okay, you, you muffled, mother. You, you need a mic and you need, yeah. You, use, where's your mic? That's to be humble. Got to be humble. So he was teaching humility. Will humility get you in the presence of God? Not alone, but yet. We have to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, don't we? 
You can't go acting like you God and you big G and he little G. That's not going to work. All right, so think about it. About this story as far as the children and the analogy of coming as a little child, except we become as a little child. What? Is God not our father? Yeah. Are we not his children? So that, you can see how that points us back okay. to relation. Okay, all right. What do you think about uh, his purpose when he did miracles, such as feeding the 5,000 with the little boy's lunch? Not just faith, but what did he do? What did he do with that? He provided. He provided the needs of the people. They were hungry. So he showed himself as a provider. What about um, when he healed the sick? Many times, many times over the lepers. You remember the ten lepers? Uh, you remember, uh, oh my goodness, so many, so many times he healed us uh, blind by the bed. Uh, so many times. What, what? So when you get in his presence, who changes? Him or you? That's right. That's right. The woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. Who changed? Her and Jesus. She changed. In his presence. Mm -hmm. All right? Glory to God. What You got an example? Anybody have another example of a familiar Bible story and how it relates back to God trying to get his family back, to God bringing man back in relationship or communication uh, with him? What do you think? When he raised Lazarus from the dead. When, the dead, when all those witnesses... After what? Four days. Four days. He could have did it the first day. And with David and Goliath, mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord. Uh-huh. He said, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. What did, what did that do for the people that were there, both the Philistines and the Israelites? What did that do? Show respect to God. Know that God is the true God. And from you, put your trust in him. He will come in true for you. Mm -hmm. You have to believe. You have to have faith. Yeah, you yeah. can't doubt God. Also, so, was not Goliath big? Yes. yes. He was insurmountable in the eyes of the yeah. Israelites, uh -huh. the army. They felt like they were little grasshoppers yes. in his sight. Did they not? Yes. They wouldn't dare go out and fight. Goliath was taunting them, yes. putting them to shame. Yes. And then here comes David, little boy, David to say, wait a minute. Yes. We got God on our side. Yes. He ain't nothing. God is greater than any giant. Greater than your mountain. Amen. Greater than your problem. Amen. That was an Old Testament analogy, but it still pointed us to God. All right. What else? Some other actions of Jesus that he did that certainly point us to this uh, 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 purpose of bringing us back into the presence of God. What else did Jesus do that you can see? Whether it was a, a parable or whether it was an actual performance of something. That's the woman at the well. The woman at the well. What did he? What? 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 What happened there? There he tell this woman everything about her, and caused her to realize that she wasn't just talking to a natural man. Amen. He was here. He knows everything I do. And after Jesus tell her about the living water, uh -huh. she didn't realize. She thought, because she asked the question, are you greater than our father? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she didn't realize that. But when she come to acknowledge now, and Jesus talked with her, she went away singing, yeah. and bringing back others. Come, yeah. come. Yeah. She, she a witness same time. Yes. That same thing we have to do. We have to go down. When she realized so she was in his presence, yes. she couldn't keep it to herself. Come, come see her, man. But not only that, as you said, Mother, he revealed the omniscience of God, the all-knowing power of God. Now here, the devil tricked Adam and Eve 
and the thinking they didn't know everything they needed to know when they were in the presence of the omniscient one, the one who knew all. And they had everything that he had. He provided everything to them. But the devil came and whispered in their ear, God don't want you to know. He don't want you to see. All right? So we can see how we just played that trick. Please put in the chat that we are on, we're off mute and we're on. So for those, because there were several uh, pings, people were on. I heard them coming on. Just put that in the chat. Uh, we apologize. We had it on mute, but we are on the phone line as well. Thank you. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I, on the phone lines, this is the time as well. All right. Okay. So you, we can look at all the different things. I mean, we could go on and on. Uh, the different miracles, even with the turning water into wine, yes. and why this was his first recorded miracle. Yes. All right. Now, how? What do you think? How do you think that tied into pointing back or getting man's attention back to the greatness of God? And what did the man say? He said, normally they order the worst wine first. first. Not the best. The best wine for the last Sunday. Everybody was I mean, the up. best wine first. Yeah. And then when everybody drunk, they get a worse wine. Yeah. And here, he said, you get the best. God yeah. has the best for us, saints. Yeah. He has the best reserved for us. He created the best. And so he wants us. He wants his family back. He wants his family back and he'll do anything for his family amen he'll do anything to get his family back such that how do we know that that he'll do anything to get his family back how do we know that god will do anything to get his family back? He, gave his life. he gave his son his one and only son he'll do it as mothers we're willing to do anything for our children and our grandchildren we don't want nobody to hurt them or come and destroy them. No. We would be getting in front of the bullet if we could. Take me, Lord. Leave them. Because of our love. Oh, God loves us with an everlasting love. All right. So I want to say, because I got a few more uh, things. But I just wanted you to think, when you're reading your Bible now, look to see how this points back to God trying to get his family back. As you're reading the stories, both in the Old Testament and the New Amen. Just think of that thought. God wants us back. This is what he did. So that Israel had to go through this and go through Babylon and go through this and go through that, you know, the situation with that. Go through all of these being in and out of slavery. In and out of slavery. Back to, over to Egypt. Coming back. You know, then they be free and enjoy it. Then they get get the big head and, and, and think they did it all themselves and they draw away from God. And God would have to nudge them back and allow the enemies to come and uh, oppress them or take them away. And then they would have sense enough to pray and say, we remember when. Amen. And that happens to us. Amen. Amen. But well, we have to come to ourselves. Amen. And say, Wait a minute. Amen. Even as the story of the prodigal son. Come on, talk to me. Come on, bring that story up, y'all. How does that story show you? What was the father doing? Looking, a father, waiting, anticipating that his son was going to come back one day. He never gave up. He kept on looking, kept on waiting. And when he came, did he beat him across the head and say, I told you not to go? Glory to God. He was so glad. He gets a kill the fatty cat. Bring him along. And the son had enough sense to humble himself and say, Father, you know, I'm a messed up. I don't deserve to be treated like your son. If you just let me work for you. I realize now that I threw away everything you were trying to give me. But can we work for it, saints? No, he couldn't work for his father. Why? Because he was his son. There is something about the relationship. Hey, glory. We've got a relationship with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. We can't work for it. Glory to God. And even when we mess up, he's still right there. Amen. I remember the song said, with arms wide open, he'll pardon you. There is no secret what God can do. 
Amen. He's standing there waiting. And Mother B was singing the song. He was there all the time. All the time. Oh, I love it when she sings that song. Waiting patiently yes, yes. in line. Jesus was there. We may leave, we may move, but he's right there where you left him. You at home that are listening, he's right there where you left him. If you backslidden or find yourself back in the street, hallelujah, just draw near to God. Just say, Lord, I've sinned against you. Come back home like the prodigal son. Say, Father, forgive me. I realize now I was where I needed to be. I thought the grass was greener, but I realize there ain't even no grass on the other side. I need you. Give me you. And only you. I believe and I know that if you do that, God, hey man, he wants you back. He's not trying to punish you. He wants you back. Amen. Glory to God. All you have to do is surrender to him. All right? So we know that uh, everything Jesus uh, did was to get God's presence back into man's experience, to bring God back into man's life. Because the people were getting worse and worse. They were being drawn away with their own lust further and further away. And you can read it all through the Old Testament. You see it. You'd be like, well, when are they going to figure this out? Amen. They sin, get in trouble, go to bondage, then God bring them through. They be all right for a little while. Then they do it all over again. It's got to go into captivity or, or somebody come and burn the place. It was, you know, it's like, okay, well, when y'all going to get this right? That's what we say now because this Monday night quarterback, we probably would have been doing the same thing yeah. back then. Yeah. Back and back and forth. Because they couldn't help it. But we can help it. Because we got Jesus. They didn't help Jesus. God had to send Jesus because they couldn't get it done. They could only stay for a little while and then they turn right back around. That's why Jesus had to die. He had to shed his blood. That's why. That's why. That's why. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God designed us saints to always be with us. And we're not going to be comfortable if we're outside of his presence. Because we were made to be in God's his presence. presence. We're going to malfunction. We'll even self-destruct if we don't get in his presence. Because we're out of our element. Our element is the presence of God. We were created to be in his presence. Amen. And so, glory to God. Man, of course, was God's temple on earth. And we became unholy through Adam and Eve. So God had to cleanse us. And I love John 15 and 3. He had to cleanse us and make us holy again through the sacrificial death of his son. Aren't you glad? I mean, nobody's glad somebody died. But I tell you, I'm real glad Jesus died. Amen. I'm real glad. We, we grew up saying, thank God for Jesus and Jesus for his blood. Amen. I ain't happy about nobody else dying, but I'm so glad he did. Because we that he died. We would have no way back. We'd be like the Old Testament Israelites. Save on Sunday. Fussing and cussing by Monday, back in the club on Friday, and then coming to church on Sunday. Going back, and some of y'all still like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, that's what happened because we can't keep ourselves. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. That's why he sent the comforted. Yes. We need help. Yes. Right? We need help. We, even with his blood, we still need help. Y'all get that? Yeah. Amen. He not only died for our sins and paid the price and opened the door back, made a way. He is that door. Yeah. Amen. But he said, I'm going to send you some help. Yeah. You need some help. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So we grew up saying, I thank God for Jesus and I thank Jesus for his blood. We don't say that about nobody else. We don't thank God for nobody else's blood. But we thank God that he shed his innocent blood. Hey, no remission of sins. Amen, Mother. Glory to God. So his blood cleanses us and makes a way for us to return back to God. And so that God's spirit can return back to man. Remember, he blew the breath of a life. Yes, yes. Thank God. And man became a living soul. But in Adam, 
all men die. But in Christ Jesus, we were made alive. Amen. Amen. All right, so we, we're here to be in temples on earth. Now, the key to continuing the work of Jesus in each of us is the Holy Spirit. Amen. When the Spirit is alive and well in us, I'm talking about God's Holy Spirit. Amen. He restores the presence of God to our life and leads us into holiness. Do you understand and realize that holiness was the birthright of man? Man became a living soul. He blew his breath into man. Everything about man was holy. How can I say that? What gives me the right to say that? Mm -mm. Think about it. Because God is holy. Mm -mm. Go simple. Don't go heavenly minded. Just go simple. What gives me the right to say that uh, uh, holiness was man's birthright? What God intended. One at a time, one at a time. And speak it to the mic so those on the phone can hear. That's, that was what God need what man to be in his presence at all times. Don't, don't get so deep. Just plain and simple. Come on. Think. He made it man in his image. Okay. God is holy, right? Yes. Okay, beside the relationship. Okay, we're not going. Work. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's all good. Everything you're saying is good. Everything is fine. But this is just basic. Okay, yeah, true, true. And then he put them in the garden. Mm -hmm. And they fellowship, right? Mm -hmm. God is holy. God is holy. Yes, he's a holy God. So Adam had to be holy. In order to fellowship with God. Because sin cannot remain in its presence. So Adam was holy. Holy and holy can have fellowship. Adam had the birthright of holiness. And when he sinned, he lost the birthright. You don't believe me? Who does Jesus call the prince of this world? Satan. How did Satan become the prince of this world? Because Adam gave him. Who had control of the world? Go to Genesis. Who had control of the world? Adam and Eve, God told them to have dominion. Come on, saints. He had dominion. He gave that up to say, Satan didn't have that. God told him to have dominion over. All right, I'm going to prove it to you. Don't worry. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go here. Uh, let's talk about the altars, and, and I'm going to prove it to you. And, and we're going to Genesis. Get your Bibles ready. We're going to Genesis. All right. I want to talk just a little bit about altars, and then I'm going to prove it to you in the scripture. Holiness. Adam was created to have fellowship with God. He could only be holy. Sin could not be there. You agree? No. no. Okay. All right. Amen. And so it, it, he was born that way. God created him that way. God created him holy. In his own, own image. In his own image. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. All right. Now, an altar. What is an altar? Anybody? What is an altar? 
a place of worship. All right. So the altar prepares a place for the presence of God to come. Uh, I remember when we were kids growing up in church, they would always have us come to the altar and kneel and do what we call carry or call Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. So we were calling on the Son of God's name, the Savior, because that was preparing us for God to come into our lives. So they say, call him, call him, call him a little longer, call him a little short. Oh man, we beat up, beat up, beat up. And if we get up for the night and we come back, but they bring us to the altar. We didn't understand what was going on so much. But coming to the altar prepares you to be in the presence of God. And, 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 and so the altar is a place for the presence of God to come, for God to meet you there. All right, so we come to the altar for prayer, don't we? Yes. It's a sacred place, a holy place. Now, wasn't at the beginning, okay? Nope, 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 nope. This was after sin, huh? Because God and Adam hung out all the time. Mm -hmm. Adam was in his presence all the time. Mm -hmm. I want you to be clear about that. The altar wasn't really necessary then. It wasn't necessary then. It was after sin. All right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. But the altar prepares a place for the presence of God to come. It represents a place of consecration. Whenever we're, we're consecrating or we're coming to pray, we kneel down at the altar to humbling ourselves, a, a sign of surrender, right? Glory to God. And you remember the Holy of Holies in the temple. And it was really structured then. And God told them exactly how to build and what to do. And then they got really uh, specific later on. All right. But in the very beginning, if we go to Genesis 4 and 3. Let's go to Genesis 4, 3 through 4. Um, four Genesis 4. You want me to read it? Yes, you may. Okay, I'm reading from the New International. Version. Read as loud as you can, Mother, so that they can hear you. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portion from some of the firstborn of his flock. Okay. Now, what was Cain and Abel doing? Offering sacrifice. Hmm? Worship. A form of worship. Why? Will you come? Go ahead on the phone. You were saying something, Sister Davis? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, 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 Cain brought um, his uh, offering and so did Abel, but it was a form of worship, right? Okay. So they were trying to get in touch with God. Amen. Worship. Amen. Trying to communicate. Remember, communication was pretty much uh, uh, cut off. All right. And so here Cain and Abel come. They knew enough or had learned enough. Amen. From Adam and Eve, they were trying to get in touch. Mom and daddy had blown it, but we're going to try to get this thing. All right. So they come now and they offer an offering to God. All right. So this was to get God's presence back or to get in the presence of God. All right. So God's people back in the Old Testament, and you'll see it all throughout, they build altars. All right. For different reasons, but they would build altars to prepare a place to get it right, to prepare a place, to get in the presence of God and for the presence of God to come amongst them. They would build an altar and they would offer sacrifices on those altars, either to invite God to come or to commemorate something that he's done. In some cases, when he brought them through and brought them across the uh, uh, Red Sea, right? They built an altar there in remembrance, to commemorate. So it could be to offer a sacrifice, or of course, it could be to commemorate a time uh, where God brought them through or brought you through. Amen. And so that, that is pretty much the, uh, the purpose of the altar. So now, after the offerings are given by Cain and Abel, all right? The next thing you see is a man's attempt to communicate with God through sacrifice. Now, now we find that 
Cain gave the fruit. Abel gave a sacrificial offering. And God blessed who? Abel. <laughs> Come on, say it. God bless Abel. Why did he bless Abel? Sacrifice. Give him a good sacrifice. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, did you have something to add there? Was someone on the line saying something? Don't want to mention. Yes, he gave it to Abel. All right. Abel gave the fat portion of the firstborn of his flock. So that meant something had to die. Blood had to be shed without the shedding of blood. So Abel's attempt to communicate with God involved a sacrifice. You with me? Okay. All right, good. All right, so now let's think about it. The next time we hear about an altar after Cain and Abel, all right, is in Genesis with Noah. Noah, uh, let's go to uh, Genesis 8, 21. Uh, uh, and, and, and so we want to talk about this. So now this is after Noah and his family, you know, the after the ark, after they was out there, you know, those 40 days and all, and after the boat had come to land, and they got out. When Noah and all those animals got out of that ark, what did they do? Yeah. Let's go to Genesis 8, 21, and we'll read 21, uh, 22, and uh, the first verse of, of, of uh, the ninth chapter. The Lord smell the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of humans even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. All right, hold it right there. All right, do you see that? Uh, so man's heart is wicked from a child. So we lost the holiness birthright, didn't we? If our heart is wicked, even from a child, we don't have birthright. Adam, in Adam, all men die. All right, the only way to get back into the presence of God or for God to get his family back was to send the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus Christ. Only son. What a price he paid. Because now, if Jesus was on the cross, now he became sin for us. He who knew no, 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 no sin, sin became sin for us. And you can't be in the presence of God with sin. So now holy. Jesus cries out, Father. Father, why has thou forsaken me? He had to be separated from the presence of his father. And he did that for you and me. And he did that for me. Even though it was temporary, I'm sure it was torturous. Pain, the nails, all that, all that may have heard. Come on, saints. But being separated from God is what he was crying about. Woo! And yet we act like we don't need God or it's okay to, you know, go and slide to the left or slide to the right and act up and backslide, moonwalk. But being separated from God was the most painful thing. For Jesus. I wanted to point that out. 
that from our youth as a child. You ain't got to train a child to sin. No, uh -uh, you ain't got to train. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Train. You don't have to train him to lie. You don't have to train him to cheat. No. Nope. Uh -uh. Okay. All right. 22. It said, what promise did he make? He repented. God said, okay, I can't do this no more. I can't wipe the earth out no more. You know, things must have got really, really bad. They were terrible. For God to just wipe out everything on the earth. That bad. Amen. All right, 22. As long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. All right, God makes a vow to himself. I'm not doing that no more. All right, not, not, nine and one. Then God bless Noah. And his son saying to them, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. All right. All right. So question. Was God pleased? All right. Noah comes, he gets out, he builds an altar. Was God pleased with Noah's attempt to communicate with him? How do you know he was pleased? All right. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. God blesses Noah and he blesses his sons. Uh, but notice that there's a difference between this blessing and the one that he gave to Adam and Eve. Let's go back. Let's look at what he said to Adam and Eve. Let's go to Genesis 1 and 28. Because it sounds similar, doesn't it? But it's not exactly the same. Genesis 1 and 28 says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Sound similar to what he said to Noah? And replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So what was the difference between what God told Noah and his sons and what he told Adam and Eve? What was the difference? Thanks. He, he, he gave Adam and Eve dominion over the earth. Mm -hmm. Did he get that to Noah? No. He That's didn't. right. God does not command Noah to subdue the earth and to rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, and over every little thing living creature. Why? Because that was already done. This was God's uh, covenant between his people. Okay. Y'all hear Sister Davis? Yeah. Okay. Anybody have anything to add to that? Why was the charge or command different that from Adam and Eve to Noah and his Sons, his survivors. One at a time and speak in the mic so they can hear you. You heard her now. Speak in the mic so they can hear you. Because Adam was the first. No, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Come on. Why? Yes, go right ahead. We're listening. Where Adam and Eve, that was a creation. It was to, it was to uh, uh, replenish the earth with Adam and Eve, but with Noah, with Noah, I, uh, that was a replenishing is what I'm saying, with Noah. Because with Adam, it was creation, but with Noah, it was a, like a, a redo, you know? Yeah, but the, the first part of the charge is pretty much the same. Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth. Adam had the same. But the, he, they didn't, he didn't give Noah the second part of subduing or dominion. And the question is, why? Because it was already done. Oh, no. They were out of the garden. They were going with Adam and Eve. 
had they lost their they were, remember when you say it's already done i want to make sure i understand what you're saying uh adam and eve lost their privilege they had they got kicked out of the garden right yeah so did they still have dominion over the earth when they when they got kicked out no no, no. they lost it oh, right. all right through sin they lost their right and their power to dominate the earth you with, you with me now all right lost it all right that's how you know that's why we say it. Jesus refers to saying that the prince of the world they lost it okay through sin they lost their right and power to dominate the earth you with me yeah they gave that to Satan they gave Satan that right and that's what Jesus refers to him as the prince of this world. Let's go to John 14 and 30. I want you to see it for yourself. St. John 14, 30. Someone can read it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. 14, 30. Here I I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. All right? He was referring to Satan. Okay? All right. So now man is in the position where we, of course, because of Jesus Christ, can actually now build an altar to God create an environment for his presence to come to us through our praise and our worship. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we're not talking about a praise service or, you know, us dancing and shouting. We're talking about the truth. Your statement of the truth, your belief in the truth, and your reaction to the truth. The word said, you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And when you worship him in spirit and in truth, you create an environment where his presence can come. All right? So we want, we're going to stop here. Uh, we're out of time now. Uh, man is communicating with God now. So this relationship, of course, is not moment by moment like it was with Adam and Eve. All right? where there was that moment to moment uh, God and fellowship that Adam enjoyed with God. They, they were family, but God is fighting for his family. He wants his family back. He wants us back. And what do we mean by that? Back in an environment where we can thrive. Where is that? For in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Being in his presence. That's where he wants me and you. He wants us there all the time. Amen. We thank God for the lesson tonight. I trust that you have a better understanding. We all are growing in the knowledge of his word. Every time we come together, there's a little nugget here. Somebody will say something. Or hopefully the light comes on in the area. You read it over and over. But now you see, God has developed from the beginning of time since Adam and Eve cut up. Amen. He's finding a way, making a way for his people to get back. He wants his family. And just as the prodigal son's father, he's looking and waiting. Those of you that are backslidden, those of you that are out there, even on the street now, and you just may see a copy of this later on, or looking on the YouTube. God is just waiting with arms wide open, waiting to pardon you, waiting for you to come back home. He wants to be your father. He wants you to call on him and cry, Abba, Father, which art in heaven, Hollywood, and holy is your name. So if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, we encourage you to seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Ask him. Ask him to forgive you to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He'll do it. He did it for me. He'll do it for you. We thank God for the lesson tonight. Everyone that joined us online and on the uh, phone line. Uh, again, we trust you'll join us here uh, next week, 701. No, next week we have Vacation Bible School. That's right. 
Amen. We have BBS next week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night. So join us here. Amen. Go to God. I guess, I don't know. We won't, yeah, because they'll be in different activities. So we won't be on the YouTube, I don't think. Maybe for the opening and maybe the closing, we could get on the YouTube. But we'll be at Vacation Bible School. Amen. Next week. So Holy Start. Holy Scripture, we're talking about the altars of God. When we come back, we'll, we'll uh, I'll go into um, how we become friends. Is God your friend? How we become friends. All right, Sister Ty, wave it at me. Quite a few people that are watching us um, on YouTube, quite a few. Um, and there's a Glenford James. Hey, Glenford! He oh, said hello and he loves you. That's my baby. That's my son. And um, I'm he, in Colorado. He wants to have the number to our um, teleconference. Yeah. Um, somehow when you type it on uh, the chat, it's erased, I guess, for privacy purposes. But our, um, our uh, teleconference number is 701-801. Six zero five two. We'll say that again. Seven zero one eight zero one six zero five two. And we have about seven people oh, that are watching on YouTube right now. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and for all of you that are joining us on the phone line as well. There's something about the saints getting together and studying the word. And I know you say, well, Pastor, you do a lot of the talking, but also pinch you and ask you questions to make you think. Uh, we only got the one hour, and so we try to teach as much as we can. But then I, I invoke, and I hopefully invoke your thought. I hope that what I said tonight will cause you to think when you read your Bible how this points back to God getting his family back, how it points back. Everything in the Bible points to Jesus Christ. All that New Testament. All right, and Jesus only came to bring us back, to redeem us. And then that's why we can say the Bible is all about God keeping his family and getting his family back. And his family is you. His family is me. It's all of us. So we thank you for joining us tonight. We certainly want to encourage you to continue to pray. We have a prayer list. If you need prayer, just send us an email, mtcalvarync.org at gmail.com or pastorscott to me at gmail.com and we'll add your name to the prayer list. You don't have to tell us the situation. Just ask for prayer. Amen. We've got some dynamic prayer warriors that are in this building on new uh, at noon time on Tuesday and Friday. But whether they're in the building or out of building, they're always praying. We always pray at saints. Amen. And so we pray uh, for those that we know about. Want to pray for the bereaved. Amen. Sister Julie Capers. Amen. Uh, her son, my board member, uh, Shaman Elliott's family. Amen. And all those that lost their lives. All of those migrants that were trapped in that truck being trafficked, yeah. all of those souls, amen, and there were earthquakes, it's just so much, and of course the people in Ukraine trapped under the building, bombing of yeah. the uh, uh, different uh, residences, so we just want to continue to plead the blood of Jesus and pray, praying for our children, our youth everywhere, youth vacation Bible school, come on, we're going to be here, uh, and, and we're looking forward to seeing you next week. Our hearts and minds clear? Amen. All right. We're going to thank God for Elder Allison. We hear you on the phone. Amen. And so we're going to close out in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you for enriching us tonight in your word. Thank you, Lord, for sharing with us and reminding us of how valuable we are to you. We were created to live in your presence. And we thank you that you've done everything possible to create that environment for us. And we understand and know that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So help us, God, to live holy. You've cleaned us through the blood of your Son. Now help us to stay clean through the leading and guiding of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. People of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you on the phone line. We love you. Looking forward to seeing you on 